All right, today I'm going to be showing you what happens when you don't prep your surface properly for clear coat, what can happen to you, how to prevent it, and I'm going to show you also how to fix it. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around, consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications, a thumbs up would be great, a couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos that really helps us keep going. And with that, let's get started. All right, so let's start off by taking a look at what happened to this particular piece. Now, I was lucky enough that this was my particular personal guitar, but you really don't want this to happen to you on a client's you know, guitar or piece. And this took about, I'd say, almost a year to start delaminating. But you really don't want that to happen when you know, you're going to charge somebody really good money for your artwork. Now, this is not a two-part clear that's over here. It's just your regular can clear off your shelf from your local home store. But it is a very good clear. What I mean by that is it's not a 2K clear or a catalyzed clear, you know, like an automotive type of clear, which in most situations like this, it's not being exposed to the elements. It's usually just fine. Now, I don't even use this guitar a lot, so I didn't expect this to happen. But taking shortcuts sometimes doesn't always work out. But basically why this really happened was is because when I scuffed the guitar up, I only really scuffed up in the area that I was going to put my artwork never really thinking about the clear coat that was going to go back on top of it. Right after I got done putting a clear coat on, I realized I didn't scuff those particular areas up, and I thought, ah, it'll be okay. Well, the proof is right here, not okay. It's amazing when you don't scuff up your surface that you don't give it, you know, they always talk about giving your surface a little bit of tooth, right, something to grab onto. This is a perfect example where the clear coat just did not have a good surface to adhere to. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be taking out the same scuffing pad that if you saw any of my other videos to put clear coat on is the scuffing pad I always go to. And this one happens to be by Master Pro. There's plenty of them out there. You can just go you know, to your local. I, I go to my auto parts store. This one here is a smoothing pad. It's for final scuffing before primer coats. So it's, it's a smoothing pad, basically. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to scuff up the clear coat because this should be very adhered to where I did scuff it, okay? And I'm hoping to peel off this clear coat and be able to feather or blend it in in order to come back and hit it with another clear coat. All right, I'm going to start by scuffing actually the whole guitar. I'm going to see where the clear coat is going to pull up. I'm expecting it to only pull up out here on the edges where I didn't initially scuff, but if the clear coat starts to peel over my artwork, I'm going to have a real problem, and at that point, the artwork may need to be redone. And you can see as I'm scuffing, it's just going to peel away. It's going to flake off. Okay, so we're going to have to get off as much of that as we can and try to see if we can feather this in. Actually, a really cool tool to have here would be a plastic razor blade. They use them for peeling vinyl. I don't have any in my shop right now. So I'm going to take actually a plastic pick, which would be very similar to the plastic blade. And I'm going to try to peel away as much as I can here and help along the scuffing pad a little bit. You definitely don't want to use a metal blade here. You definitely will dig into your, your surface. All 
Uh, you can see actually, you know, a little bit of air with this compressor will blow away a lot of the loose chips too. give you a little bit of, again, help instead of just using the sc scuff pad. So we'll get as much of this loose stuff out of here as we can. We'll try to use the scuff pad and maybe some sandpaper to blend it back in. But you can see how the, the air will actually help peel, you know, the loose stuff away. See that? I mean, if it peels up that easy with air, it's not going to stick for very long. It's just going to keep going. You got really got to make sure you get all the loose stuff up. The other thing I really want you to take a note of is that now that we're getting some of it off, you can see how shiny that is. So you could tell that it wasn't scuffed before it was cleared. All right, let's go back to the scuffing pad. Now I'm going to probably want to try to take off all of this in here for the most part up around the artwork and then try to feather it in. I don't want to leave uh, patches like this. So for the most part, again, I'm going to try to work around the artwork. And like I said, I got very lucky here in the, the fact that I scuffed up the artwork before I put the, the airbrush down. Uh, so the, like, again, the clear coat adhered to that. For some reason, I just got lazy or whatever at the time. I didn't think about it, and I didn't scuff all the way up here. And I missed it when I went to, to clear it. Like I said, I realized as soon as I cleared it, but I thought it'd be okay. So now this also becomes a tricky task into where now you're trying to get the clear coat off, but you also don't want to sand down below the finish of whatever's on this particular thing, that we're, in this case, the guitar, because if you sand down below the black, now you got another problem. So... When you get down to like this, you're really going to have to concentrate on where your clear coat is and trying to just put the pressure there instead of actually onto the surfaces that the clear coat is now removed from. All right, so I got some 1,000 grit sandpaper. I would prefer 1,200. I don't have any right now, so I'm going to, you know, touch it lightly with the 1,000, and then I'm going to bump it up to 2,000. Again, I'm going to try to stick to feathering out the edge. You don't want to go through the undercoat or the base coat of the black. Basically, you got a little lip right there. You want to try to make that a nice, even, quote, ramp. So you want to feather it, as they call it, feather it in. And I'm trying to do that instead of going across it like this. I mean, you know, sometimes it'll go across, but for the most part, you want to be perpendicular at 90 degrees to it because you're trying, again, trying to knock that edge down, smooth it into the base coat. And you'll notice, too, if it's not adhering, it'll start peeling. you got to get it back to where it really stuck. Automotive prep, multi-purpose foaming prep cleaner is what I'm using on the surface here. I want to make sure I got off all of, you know, if you just wipe it down, it's not going to be enough with all of the sanding you did. I probably should have did this before I taped. Would have been a little easier. So you want to make sure that everywhere you're going to be painting is dry. So make sure you get all your edges. So I'm going to be putting on the same clear that I originally put on this guitar. It's just a Krylon clear. Now, even though this is not a two-part clear or clear with a catalyst in, like an automotive clear, I still wear my P95 respirator. So what the plan here is, is going to be to lay this on lightly just up in this area and feather in. So you want to build this up a little bit first before you're going over here because you want to build a couple layers up here, probably about two to three layers, and try to build this up and then feather it or blend it in. So here we go.
All right, we're going to put some air on that. We're going to let that go. And again, we're going to build this up over two, three coats. I'm going to shut the camera off for a little bit. We're going to keep repeating this process. We'll see you after three coats. All right, well, I got quite a few thin layers on here. I built it up to where I felt I was almost about there, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 600 piece of sandpaper on a block and I'm just going to go along that edge and again, try to knock that edge down because the goal here in the end is going to be once I do that, I come back, put a clear coat on the whole thing and then buff it. So you can see where it's not level between here you know, the old clear coat and the new clear coat, so you're bridging a nice flat piece over top of it, okay? So that's where we gotta get it to level out, level up. So I hit it with some dry sandpaper. You can't continue on with the dry sandpaper. It's gonna build up on the paper, so I'm gonna go to wet sanding. I just wanted to get an idea of how much I have to get down or what I need to fill in yet. So you're gonna have to be careful again on these edges with your sanding block and stuff. If you hit the edge, you gotta make sure you're flat because if you hit the edge, you're gonna take it right off, right down. All right, so after getting a feel for where I'm at with this, I still wanna build up a little bit more around this edge. So I'm gonna lay some more clear down on this. I'm gonna build up more around this edge. I'd actually even maybe like to get it a little higher. All right, so off camera, I've been working on this pretty diligently. So about every, you know, 10, 15 minutes, depending on how it was drying, what I did is I came and I kept adding coats of the clear only to the edge line that I had and beyond over here to build this up. I actually wanted to try to build it up even a little higher than what was over here so that I can come back and I can just level it. So you can see right here where like a low spot would be. Okay, where it would still be a little shiny. But as you can see here, this line here, I mean, I just blended it all in now. So now it's all back to smooth. The clear is on the guitar. I did all of that with a series of 600 grit sandpaper. And then actually I wanted to go even a little bit more aggressive. I didn't have any 400 with me, so I had 500. You can use 400. And I wet sanded with 500 to get it down nice and smooth. Again, you want to concentrate you're sanding just right in here on the edge, nice and flat with a block, okay? You have to use a block. If you use your fingers or your hands, you're never gonna level this out. So it's essential that you, when you sand something like this, that you're using a block. Now this, I can barely feel it, I can see it, but well, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna, now I'm gonna run over this with 1500, okay? Just to get all of the 500 scratch marks out and then to 2000, okay? By the time I do all of that, I suspect these little tiny, you know, shiny spots that are left, I mean, there's not many of them, um, will disappear. So now my clear coat is nice and flat. Once that happens, I'm going to come back, I'm going to clear coat the whole thing, and we should be good. All right, got a fresh can of clear here. So maybe you could see what I did here. I just kind of like tore the tape above. I don't want the tape over. I want to make sure I get it to the end now. It is very crucial here when you're putting this down with a can. It goes on relatively heavy and quick. You don't want to pull it up here at the edges. Okay, so you want light coats here. Make sure your coats are light, especially the first one. You're going to let that tack up. You're going to come back with another light coat. So two coats minimum. See what it looks like, possibly three. But again, you don't want to go too heavy. I've made that mistake in the past where you know, I thought I had to get it on nice and wet. And when you're painting in a down position like this, you think you're safe because it won't run. It will, it'll sag, okay? Even the slightest tilt that this is on, it'll sag. So you don't want to get too heavy. But again, I've already had it pull up here at the tape and you really don't want that. So you want these coats to be light. Here we go. And again, make sure you're wearing your mask and you have proper ventilation.
All right, so I got one coat of clear on here, real light coat. So I'm noticing something. Even if I buff this, there's going to be a difference in color because of the background that I had on here between the artwork and what is new. So we're going to see a line there. Now, it's not going to be very prevalent, but I'm going to put one coat of clear on here. I see something here also where when I'm sanding down, I must have hit the artwork. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to come back, and we're going to get the white out with the airbrush, and we're going to make this look, you know, blend it back in, and you really shouldn't notice anything wrong with it. So, like I said, we're going to take the white, we're going to blend it back in. Once we're satisfied with where the touch-up is on the artwork, we'll come back in, and we'll give it its final coat of clear. All right, so I've got the first coat of clear on here, and I'm zoomed in here on purpose because I want you to see this, but just because of the way the background was put on before, it had a lot of remnants of the background, so the mist went all the way up almost to the top of the guitar. Of course, when I sanded off the clear here, I sanded off the background. So we're going to have a little bit of touch-up to do here, but the really cool part is it didn't touch the artwork. So I'm going to be able to blend that in with the airbrush. I'll show you that in a minute. And we'll be able to remove this line. So this line here really isn't, if you can see that, that line there really isn't the two parts of the clear coat you know, transition anymore. That's actual background mist right there. Now, you can see right here where I did go down too far and I took some of the background right off over here also. So I'm gonna go in and touch that up. So I'm gonna hit this with some 2000, scuff it up again, do the artwork or the repairs and come back and then we'll put the two coats of clear on it and we should look like we're back to where we were before we started. All right, so I got some detail white by Createx loaded up here in my Iwata Eclipse CS. I also got my freehand airbrush template by Art Tool. It's from their Texture FX2 effects. This one is Organic Net. That's what I used for this background here. So again, we're just going to try to get that background in back to where we had it. So we're eliminating the complete black to where the outline or the background was that we had to take off. So you can see here also, it's dulled down now. I went back over it with my scuff pad and then I hit it with some 2000 real quick. So I got that knocked back down. Let's put it in. So I gotta be careful here where the skull is to put that background back on without getting too much going on with the skull. This up here should be relatively easy. Take it a little at a time. Don't get too crazy. You'd rather be putting on a little bit and having to put more on than putting too much on. So if you go too far, there's really no turning back. So this is the important part, right? And you really can't hardly even see it now that I got it scuffed up, but right where that total non-background line is with our background line, that's what you're looking to blend in, or what I'm looking to blend in. Again, going at it lightly, checking very frequently. I'm just going to work around that line. I'm kind of like the skull up. Kind of blended that right back in already, if you can see that. Now, I'm not done with it yet. But I do want you to see how quickly that blended in. Even a light little mist, you know, freehand over what you just put on wouldn't hurt either. Again, you really gotta just use your judgment 
and what you're looking at and what you're trying to hide. So everybody knows a great artist, which I am not, knows how to fix their mistakes. I'm actually going to use this opportunity to extend this down a little bit and around and even extend it up to maybe where I didn't have it before. This background template is just, it's just my favorite template for backgrounds. It's just a really cool template. Just love the effect it gives you. Another thing too, if you'll see that I'm keeping the airbrush moving, I'm not really kind of hitting just one little spot. So I'm just kind of trying to keep it soft, keep the flow going around. And so while we have it here, I'm going to take the opportunity to extend this down a little bit from where I had it before. And you know, why not? Now's the time to do it. All right, I think that's going to about do it. I really don't see any problems between the new clear coat and the original clear coat. I don't see any seams. Everything's all blended back in. It's ready for the final clear coat. All right, there you have it. Looks really good. There's no sight line of the existing clear coat to the new clear coat. Just to recap, I built up the new clear coat a little higher than what the existing clear coat was so I could level it down. If you're lower, it's gonna be very hard to feather or taper it in. So I built it up a little higher so I can level down and it worked really well. The problem I had with something like this was is that my existing background went up into the area where I had to sand off. So if this was just a solid background, I wouldn't have had to worry about going back in and touching it up. But once I leveled it out, I went back in, put the airbrush on it, and now it looks really, really good. So with that, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope the biggest takeaway from this video that you get is make sure you prep your surface properly. If I would have prepped this properly, this wouldn't have happened. So if you do that, you'll never have to go through this and risk ruining your artwork. So with that, I really do hope you learned something from this. If you did, consider subscribing. You know the drill. Hit the bell, a couple comments, good or bad. Check out all those links down below. Everything really helps out the channel. We're growing, and I appreciate it because it's all from you guys. With that, we'll see you in the next video.